Hello and welcome to Vovork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 35 in a 10 part video series where we're learning how to automate using VRI's orchestrator. In this particular video, we're uh, continuing talking about things related to the API Explorer, but we're going to change gears here. Um, the API Explorer is a wonderful tool and it oftentimes has the information that I need. In most cases it does, but sometimes I need more detail or I, I may actually need more up-to-date information. So what I'm going to talk about in this particular video is the definitive source to go to when you want to know more about the vSphere Web Services API. So as you can see here in this screenshot, we are taking a look at a website called code.vmware.com. Code.vmware.com has extensive documentation about all uh, sorts of different VMware APIs. Um, vSphere is not the only product that has an API. Um, most of our products have APIs. So I'm going to actually flip over to my web browser here and let's go to code.vmware.com. So tons of information here at code.vmware.com, uh, but in particular, what I'm interested in right now is called the API Explorer. Now, first thing to be aware of is this is not the VRO client tool called the API Explorer. It's kind of like it, but it's different. Um, the API Explorer at code.vmware.com, let's click there and go there, uh, contains uh, entry points for the documentation for all our different products that have APIs. And specifically, it has um, entry points for the different versions, the different releases of each of those products. So for instance, if I'm interested in vSphere, Let's see, vSphere, uh, I think I've already done this. Let me uh, do this. Um, I'm going to say I don't want all vSphere documentation. I just want vSphere 6.7, the latest and greatest as of the recording of this video. And as you can see, there are a number of different um, APIs, but the one that we are most interested in right now is this one called the vSphere Web Services API. That's a SOAP-based API. Uh, exposed by your vCenter server, and it's that API that the VRO plugin for vCenter knows how to talk to. So you can think of this API as, as a language that's spoken between the vCenter server, that's the server side, and the client side in our case is, is your orchestrator server. The orchestrator server has the vCenter plugin, which knows how to talk with this API. Now, before we go digging down any deeper into this API, I should point out that there's actually a newer REST version of the vCenter API. However, for, uh, for Orchestrator, at least as of right now, the vCenter plugin in Orchestrator knows how to talk to the SOAP API, not the REST API. So in going and looking at this documentation, I'm making certain that I'm looking at the correct release of the documentation, so version 6.7. And furthermore, I'm making certain I'm looking at the SOAP documentation, which I happen to know um, from experience, that's what this one is. So let's uh, take a look at VCR Web Services API. And um, it's loading in the documentation. If you want to, you can download this as a PDF file, but I find it really useful in the HTML form. There's tons of information here about this SOAP-based API, uh, all these different sections, but if you only know about one of these, the one that you really want to know about is this section here titled Manage Object Types. Now you're going to see that word Manage Object used a number of different times in this video. Let me give some examples of things that are managed objects. A VM is a managed object. A host is a managed object. A data store is a managed object. All those uh, objects that you know and love from the vCenter server world, those are called managed objects. If you want to know why they're called managed objects, read through this documentation here and you can find out. But um, instead of going and looking at the data object types, which are used internally in the vCenter server, more often than not, you want to work with the managed object types for VM or the managed object type for host or data store or network or so forth. So I'm going to expand Manage Object Types, and as you can see here, we have this lovely alphabetized list of different managed object types. And you can take a look at these uh, further if you want, but let's go take a look at one that uh, you will intuitively understand uh, more easily, which is under the letter V for, where is it? There it is, Virtual Machine. So in the previous video, in the VRO Clients API Explorer, we were looking at the definition of an object type called VC colon virtual machine. That's exactly what we're going to be looking at here. So I click virtual machine, and you'll recall when we were in the VRO Clients API Explorer, 
we could see for every single object all of its properties and all of its methods. Well, here in the API documentation, if I scroll down, I can see a section here titled Properties and a section a little further down titled Methods. So in those two sections, those two tables of this documentation, I'm going to find all the properties and all the methods of a VC colon virtual machine. And to help you out here, I'll point out, I wish someone would have told me this, but these are all alphabetized, so you should be able to quickly find the, the property or the method that you're looking for. So let's go looking for a method, um, excuse me, a property. Uh, here's that config property we talked about at the tail end of the previous video. But uh, earlier on in that video, we also talked about a property called the dot name property. Every VC colon virtual machine object has a dot name property. That dot name property stores the name of the virtual machine that's stored in that object. So let's go find the dot name property. Again, these are alphabetized, so it should be real easy to find this. Should be really, should be easy to find it, but should show up right here. But where is dot name? Um, actually, I know from experience, and you'll learn very quickly too, that the API Explorer in the Vero client um, takes a slightly different view of these objects than th this API Explorer. Uh, in this API Explorer, in this documentation, the definitive documentation um, intentionally um, doesn't gloss over some details that the VRO client API Explorer glosses over. For instance, the .name property of a VC colon virtual machine Strictly speaking, there is no such property. If you look at the definition of VC colon virtual machine, there is no dot name property. However, in object oriented programming, we can have properties that we can have objects that inherit um, properties and methods from their their parents. And that's what this section up here, the entire excuse me, the, the extend section is telling us that the object that we're looking at, this virtual machine object, actually has more properties and more methods than just the ones that we see down below. The ones that we see down below are the properties and methods that are defined sp specifically on VC colon virtual machine. But VC colon virtual machine inherits some properties and methods from its parent and potentially uh, on up the, the chain there. To find out about the object that VC colon virtual machine inherits from, we can just click on manage entity. So manage entity is extended by VM. Extended, excuse me, manage object is also extended by hosts and uh, data stores and so forth. All those uh, usual vCenter objects have this, uh, what you might think of as sort of a super object called manage object that describes the properties that are common to those. So manage object is where, where the dot name property is defined. So the reason why I'm showing you this, let me go back a page or two. Um, I'm back on the VC colon virtual machine definition page. The reason why you sometimes don't see the property or method that you're looking for is because sometimes the object is extending another. It looks like I need to go back one more page. There we go. Where is, I've lost my place here. Let me go find virtual machine. I don't want manage entity. I want, where'd it go? Virtual machine. So again, the reason why you sometimes don't see the properties that you're looking for in the object definition itself is because the property or method you're looking for is being inherited. That's what the extend section is about. Let's talk about these other sections here. So. Uh, actually, just before we do, I, I should point out that for each of the properties, you can see the name of each property, a description of each of the properties, and uh, a definition of what type of, of um, data type the, the object property actually is. So earlier, for instance, we found out that um, the con dot .config property of a virtual machine is actually a property of type virtual machine config info. And just like we did in the API Explorer and VRO, if I click here, I can see the definition of a VM config info structure, excuse me, object. And you'll recall from our previous video that in there, there's a property called dot hardware, which itself is a pointer to another type of object. If we look at that, 
we look at that, there's the memory MB that we saw in the previous video and the num CPU and the device or virtual device array and so forth. So just like we did in the API Explorer, we can find out what the dotted uh, notation is, the dotted object notation is to get to something such as vm.config.hardware.memoryMB. All right, let me go back to uh, VC colon virtual machine. If I can find it here. Okay, so I've gone back to the page that's defining a VC virtual machine. And in VC virtual machine, as we can see, we see the name of each of the properties. We see a description of each of the properties and their types. And then down below in the methods table, we see a, a, a tightly packed list, alphabetically sorted list of all the different methods that that action, that the object supports. For instance, in the last video, we were talking about power on VM underscore task. If I want to know more about that method, I can click here and it'll take me to a page that talks specifically about that method. All right, so uh, continuing onwards here, if we go up higher in this page, um, the property of section tells you that all of these objects have a property in them that's pointing to a VC colon virtual machine object. The parameter to section is telling us that all of these methods have at least one parameter that requires that we pass in a VC colon virtual machine. This return by section here, on the other hand, tells us the uh, information about each of the methods that returns a VC colon virtual machine. And then this last section here, the see also section contains uh, pointers to other parts of the documentation that talk about other objects that aren't necessarily virtual machines, but they're related in some way. And you might want to see these also because they have useful info. So again, that is a really, really quick introduction to the uh, to code.vmware.com and specifically the vSphere Web Services API, the SOAP-based API that your vCenter server is using to communicate. Again, you don't have to use this documentation all the time, but sometimes, um, for instance, uh, if you're trying to find a a workflow in the vCenter plugin to do something, but there is no such workflow, you just can't find it. Um, it's in cases like those that I pull out the API Explorer or in this uh, other cases, this API documentation so that I can create my own workflows that use my own JavaScript code that I write from scratch. Most of the time you don't have to write code from scratch in, in uh, orchestrator workflows, but when you do, the API Explorer in the Bureau client and the API Explorer here in code.vmware.com come in very, very handy. Okay, so that wraps up our little uh, mini three-part series on, on the API Explorer. Um, hope you find it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.